Hi all and welcome to this video financial modeling blog tutorial. Today we're going to look at a very clever function called the mod function and how we can use this to aggregate numbers across the page. Okay, so if you haven't already done so, stop this video, go to our website and check out the blog post associated with this YouTube video. Okay, so the question that we're looking at in this example it says find the yearly aggregate of the below quarterly revenue figures okay so now we could do this as the blog post notes we could go equals year that and change that we could change that out of comma format we're not going to do that and then we could simply go 2012 equals that plus one and we could go equals sum if and our range is going to be this one and I'm going to lock that so f4 comma and this one so if this range equals the current date or the year end then comma sum this range okay and f4 enter again so if we copy that across that's a pretty simple formula and we should be getting the same numbers as up here which you can see so for 2014 we've got 507 and 2014 we've got 507 if we check all of those numbers we've got 1590 and we've got 1590 okay so that's a simple way to do it and we're going to look at now a more complex way to do it and the only reason we're looking at a more complex way is because this can be used for non-annual figures. So things like aggregating semi-annual periods uh, going from months to quarters. So aggregating quarters from a monthly page, etc, etc. So what we're going to do firstly is we're going to put in year ending. Okay. And now what we're going to do, I'm going to put this formula in and then we're going to talk about how this formula works. So just follow with us. So EO month bracket, the quarter ending, comma, and then we're going to use our mod function. Now if you've read the blog post already, you know what the mod function does, but we're just going to simply put in mod of month and it's going to be this month. So this is the first period end. So that's the year ending. Yep. Bracket take month of this. So the quarter ending, comma. So that's the number, the month of the first period end. Take the month of the quarter ending. And then the divisor is going to be 12. Okay because we're looking at an annual figure here. If it was semi-annual, it'd be six. Okay, and we're gonna push enter, or close bracket, close bracket, and enter. Okay, now if we copy that across, we should see that, okay, just wait, we just need to lock that last cell, so F4 that one, and copy that one across, and that should be all good. Now what you'll see is that the year ending for March 2012 is December 2012. For June 2012 it's the same. All the way up to December 2012 and then it starts to go into the December 2013 figures. Okay. So now what we can do is we can go okay, year ending and we can go equals, I'll just put that one you don't have to link it and EO month comma and this one so F4 to lock that now we're only going out to December 2014 here because our last date is 30th of September 2014 and what we're going to do here is we're going to grab those revenue figures okay so all we're going to do is do the same as we did before so do a sum if and our range is or is this year ending and f4 comma so if that year ending up the top equals 
the year ending here, then comma, we're going to grab these figures. Enter, and we get exactly the same numbers as before. Okay, now let's try this formula on a semi annual range, and then we'll talk a bit about how this formula works. Okay, so now we're going to change it to semi annual and we're going to change this one to 30th and it's going to be 6 okay and we're going to change these out and this is no longer going to be that it's going to be semi annual aggregation okay and now look what's happened now just check it. It's automatically done it all for us, okay? So, number of months in the quarters, that didn't change, and then the number of months to aggregate, so we change that, and because we've got this formula as a dynamic, we obviously need to change that to semi-annual. Now what we're going to see is that we've got two June 2012s, and then we go to December, then we go to June, then we go to December, etc., etc. And down here, now we've got the semi annual revenue aggregation. Okay, so now here, if we sum those two, is equivalent to this 125 here. And it should be similar all the way across. Okay, so let's just change that back and let's go to. 31st of December 2012 and obviously we can get rid of these and year ending and year ending okay so we're back to normal I think that's all right and now let's look at, at this formula okay so if you're comfortable with this formula you can stop the video now but if you're uncomfortable with this formula I mean Firstly, you can always copy this formula and put it into your model. But secondly, let's just have a quick look at how it's working. So I'm just going to copy and paste it down here. And we're going to break it up by components. Okay, so firstly, we're going to take the mod. And now, if you've read through our blog post, you should know exactly how this mod functions working. So copy and paste so this is going to be our number and this is going to be our divisor so divisor and number so this one here is always fixed to 12 and so the only thing that changes is the month as we go across and we can see that if we copy this one across okay now this divisor is constant okay so let's look at what happens if we go equals that divided by that okay and what we're going to get in the first instance is we're going to get a remainder of 9 because 9 doesn't go into 12 okay so if it was 12 then it'd go into 12 once okay and if we did the same so for this one it's going to be 6 then 3 then 0 okay and they're all the months in the year so now if we take an EO month formula or let's just highlight those and so from March to December or the year end there's going to be nine months so if we take a simple EO month formula with that mod we're going to get to the year ending same for June so six months extra will get us to December September three months extra etc etc so this is a really, really handy formula, particularly in project finance modeling, where you need to go from, uh, well, usually need to go from 
monthly construction pages. So in a greenfield project financing, you'd go from monthly construction periods to a quarterly or semi-annual post-construction when you're actually amortizing the debt or the um, facilities. If you like this YouTube video, please help us and click the like down the bottom of this YouTube video. Alternatively, go to our website and share through some of the social media that we have at the bottom of the blog post.